Good morning, everyone. It is your friend Rick. It is October the 29th, 2017. It's a Sunday. Uh, if you need to contact me to make a donation to receive my doc, my paperwork to fight these people and try and weave our way through all the little tricks and you know the little scams. My email address is Rick R S C K zero three two seven at me dot com. That's also my email address for my PayPal account as well. Okay. Um, all right. So what we're looking at here. Uh, this is New York City. This is the New York Courts dot gov website. All right, and this is for civil court. All right, you see uh, New York City Housing Court, and these child support agencies, especially, uh, and, and in New York, um, they like to use, they like to play on words and trick you into sending them money. And one of their ways of tricking you is by sending you a document called a warrant, all right, and trying to trick you into sending them money under the threat of a warrant because, you know, we're, we're all under the impression of a warrant, you could be arrested, right? It's fairly, uh, it's not, it's not uh, foolish of you to think that a warrant could cause you to be arrested, right? Of course not. All right, so what we have right here is one of my subs, all right? Oh, this is, this is uh, Kevin. Kevin is the guy that uh, made the threat to the child support supervisor that he was going to file a um a writ of mandamus article 78 and he went from owing 15,000 then they tried to like oh yeah no nah, it's only 2500 and he wasn't going for that and they they brought it down to zero all right and now this happened to me by the way so right here this this piece of crap right here M Drini it's a woman now see she won't give you her whole name, right? M. Drini. You got to do a little digging. I'm trying to remember. I think her name is Michelle. Okay? And it's not a coincidence that he went, that they zeroed him out, and now he received this in the mail. All right? Commission of Taxation and Finance. All right? And it's a warrant. Okay? Now look what we got here. No signature. All right? Where have we seen that before, right? Income withholding orders. A signature is needed, all right? For a warrant to be issued, it you must have a signature from a magistrate or a judge under the Fourth Amendment. And every state has an equivalent to the Fourth Amendment. And I know about this stuff because, you know, you guys know my history as a police officer. You must, so let me put it to you this way. A lot of you, we've, you know, from watching television, maybe from past experiences, whatever. If uh, a police or sheriff was to show up to your door and want to search your residence, and what are you going to ask for right away? Warrant, right? Now, let's say uh, they showed a warrant, but it's lacking a signature. Would you let them in? No. Okay. Well, why would why would you send... $2,500. Remember, they said, oh, you only owe $2,500. Now they're trying to get $2,500. Why would you send $2,500 on this? Okay? Because, you know, you're not going to. Because it's a fraud. It's not a coincidence. I got the same thing in the mail after my, my arrears was vacated as well. This is another way of them to tricking you. Because once they get the money, it's very difficult to get the money back. All right, I showed you guys a couple of videos of mine where I got some money back, but I had to pull teeth to get that money back. And they still owe me money, all right? I haven't uh, dedicated myself to doing that yet, all right? Because uh, I'm busy helping you guys. And, you know, when I start putting my head into that, you know, it's going to be hard for me. Uh, I go all in, all right? So I'm not really ready to do that. I I've mentioned in past videos that, you know, I, I I'm okay right now. So I'm not really... They owe me a bunch of money. I don't need it right now. So, I mean, I'm kind of dragging my ass on it. But whatever. Not a big deal. I'm going to get it. 
So, all right. So, this is trickery. All right. Warrant. Judgment creditor. Right. Who's the judgment creditor? They are the commissioner of taxation and finance. But when did uh, when did Kevin make make a uh, make a deal to owe them, make a deal to pay them a debt? When did they lend him money? He never did. Okay, where is the judgment? Where's the fake court order? So this is a bunch of BS. Okay, this is typical trickery that we're dealing with. All right. And uh, it's good for you to, you know, to, to learn these things. You look it up on your own. All right. Um, so let me see what we got here. All right. Let me close this out. All right. Let me back space here. All right. Let's look up a warrant. All right. Let's look up a real warrant. All right, let's look up a criminal warrant. All right. An arrest warrant is a warrant issued by a judge or magistrate on behalf of the state which authorizes the arrest and detention of an individual. All right, this is uh, Wikipedia. It's not the most reliable. All right, but it gives you a pretty good idea. All right, uh, a warrant has to be based on evidence and testimony uh, for issuance, based on, and it's got to be uh, there's got to be probable cause. Okay, now you know what a warrant is. I'll let you guys know a little secret. It's a court order. It's the same thing that's required for a court order. All right. So how are they issuing a court order, ordering you to pay money? What do they need? They need evidence and they need probable cause. It's the same thing, okay? So, uh, you know, the uh, a lot of times, if you guys don't show up, you say you never were notified, they, they issue what? A default judgment, all right? I owe, I owe this money in a rib. They're doing this to a lot of you guys, all right? Because, you know, they'll, they don't care. They'll, they'll claim you all this back child support. Well, the way to go at these people is to demand uh, proof of evidence, all right? Um, and we could do that by uh, a writ of habeas corpus, okay? Challenging the constitutionality of the court order that, claim, you know, them ordering you to pay money. All right. Um, let me see. Uh, uh, criminal warrant. Let's look up um, images, right? Let's see what we get. All right. So remember I told you guys by sometimes just clicking on images on Google, you can get an idea what a real warrant looks like. All right. Here we go. All right, this is a copy of a real warrant. United States versus Earl Edwin Pitts. Signed by a special agent, right? Now, <laughs> wait a second here. What do we find here? Judicial law. Okay, yeah. Down here, it's signed by a magistrate judge. Okay? I thought it was just signed by this. This is, this is the uh, signature of the complainant. So he testified. I don't know how a special agent is a, com a complainant, but anyway, he's probably on behalf of the complainant. Um, commit violation of 18 U.S.C. 754, the reason believed that it would be used to the injury of the United States. See that? Injury of the United States, because it's the United States versus, remember, remember injury to the United States. Remember, injury in fact. So if they're using it, it's required. Uh, evidence of an injury that we allegedly caused by some conduct okay so let's flip the script on this all right child support agency versus one of us what is the injury caused to the child support agency where's the evidence that's what you got to ask for that's what we're going to have to start asking for that has to be proven before any contempt of court is issued or a default judgment Okay, now you can't be in contempt of a void judgment. All right, that is um, ex parte uh, versus Davis. It's a Texas Supreme Court decision. And why can we use that? Under what? Article 4, Section 1, the full credit 
uh, full faith and credit clause, okay? I keep repeating these things because I want you guys, it's repetition, 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 okay? So how many of you out there uh, have, by the mail, been given some type of warrant? I want you to look for these things. Most, most definitely, if it's issued by a child support agency, it's not a warrant. Okay, but you still got to get it taken care of. So what what Kevin's going to do is he's going to he's going to mail this this one wonderful woman who, by the way, doesn't even reach out back out to you. I tried to reach out to her, and uh, they don't they don't return phone calls. They don't return correspondence. Okay, but again, you saw the line. There's no signature. All right. They're just hoping that you're going to voluntarily, uh, based on ignorance, you're going to mail. And listen, you know how much money they make on ignorance and fear. <laughs> All right. So we're going to close this out, and I want to show you guys something else now. All right. Um, All right. This is the. Uh, now we're going to we're going to jump over to the clerk, the clerk paperwork, all right? Uh, I, I receive a lot of good uh, case laws from my, uh, from my subscribers out there. And I got a good one from my friend, Irvin. All right, he sent me this one. Oh, wait a second. Let me go to my profile. Wait a second here. My profile. Oh, here it is, right here. Let me go back. Hallett versus Rose. He was nice enough to send it to me last night. Now, Hallett versus Rose is. Let me read it. Okay. Federal law is enforceable in state courts. Not because Congress has determined that federal courts would otherwise be burdened. See, they was worried about that stuff. Uh, worried about they they were worried about um, inmates filing uh, court uh, filing petitions because they were uh, there was some type of decision that uh, when you're a prisoner you don't have to pay fees. But of course they changed that around because they're worried about the courts being burdened and doing their jobs. All right, you know. Let let us be burdened. We don't want to burden them, you know. They already got it. They already got an easy job, you know. They got everybody running around doing whatever they ask. Run and get me a cup of coffee. Run and get me a donut. Run and get me this. Run and get go take my car to get washed. One judge, uh, one judge got in trouble for ordering, having people go get their car get a car washed over here in New York. The wonderful people we're dealing with. The egos are unbelievable, unbelievable. But you know what? If you challenge them, they get they're fearful. Okay, that's why it's important. the The video I did for you guys yesterday, I told you that you have to put the time in and learn these things. All right, my friend Irvin, I, I me and him exchange emails all the time. He knows his stuff, so he sent me this um, case law, and it's important for us because uh, we're trying to get the paperwork to the clerk's office, and we're always being you know, some, some nonsense thrown at us. I mean, all the time. Uh, uh, one guy out here in Long Island, um, Roger, all right, he, we did, we filed, uh, now if I would have had this case law, it, it probably wouldn't have made a difference, but it would have made it a little harder. Uh, you know, dealing with one of these support magistrates who were just f so uh, intoxicated with power. And she's like, federal laws don't, do not, do not count. I mean, I could believe she actually wrote this on on, on paper that fe uh, federal federal laws are not enforceable in, in family court. <laughs> I mean, it's, but this is because she doesn't want to answer the paperwork. OK, so she's looking for any reason to dismiss the paperwork because we had a locked in. All right. So now we have this, this Supreme Court was well, Supreme Court, highest court on the land. Right. So. Uh, Article 4, Section 1, Full Faith and Credit Clause, uh, right, the, 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 all courts are supposed to uh, honor the decisions of other courts on the, the, the United States, territories of the United States of America.
All right, well, they definitely got to honor the Supreme Court decisions. I told you, I like to use Supreme Court decisions whenever I can. All right, so, uh, but, but, but because the Constitution and laws passed pursuant to it are as much laws in the states as laws passed by state legislatures. In other words, uh, it, it carries the same weight as a state law. See, they want... The states just want to say, no, our laws only. You can't, don't bring that federal, you know, the federal laws here stuff. Only state laws. You know, it doesn't work that way. Okay. Uh, you ever heard of a, a Supreme Court case, Roe versus Wade? Well, that's, that's where in 1973, Supreme Court was a landmark decision uh, that a woman has, has a right, you know, to control her body. So she's allowed to get an abortion. So. There's no states out there with a law that says so that they all went along with it. So that every as soon as that landmark case came down, all the state legislators, uh, all the state legislators in all fifty states started creating a law that says women are permitted to get abortions based on this one decision. Okay, so if one case, if one case law from the Supreme Court can do that, well, the same case law can allow us to use federal law in state courts okay so you know what's the one that we've been using well, well we have one that we've been using a lot is 28 usc 1691 which says that every writ from a from a uh, united states court <coughs> excuse me must have a, a judicial signature and a deputy clerk is not a judicial signature. How, well, most of us were dealing with signatures from deputy clerks and signatures from non-judicial persons, quorum non judice, i.e., uh, commissioners, support magistrates, man, uh, magisterial judges, okay, associate judges. You know, so uh, that means it's void. All right, so it helps that we have this in our favor. So now that we have this one case law, we could take this case law, right? What I do is I'll take it like this, come all the way down, right? Come up here, copy, right? All right. All right, what we could do, now I'm gonna show you how to do it on, um, all right, I'll just put it over here. So I'm gonna erase it anyway. I'm gonna delete it anyway, right? You're gonna edit. You're gonna paste special, right? Then you're gonna click on unformatted text, and then it what it does is it comes out like the the uh, it's, it matches the style that we're using, which is Times News Times New Roman 14 font, okay? And there we go. And what I do is. I, now I click on it, and then what I do is I, and I click on an italic. It's an italics, and then you you put it uh, in quotations, right? And now we take the uh, the case law itself, right? Come here, click on it, copy, and we do the same thing again. All right. Come here, put it over here. How do we do it again, right? We click Edit, Paste, Special, Unformatted Text, OK, there we go. And then what I do is, all right, click on it, put it in bold, underline it, all right? And then what you, the proper way of doing it is you put it in brackets, OK? And that's how you uh, you uh, you put in a case law. Okay. Now, um, I email you these things, right? How do you save it on your computer? All right. You, you get it in the email, right? You come down, and what you go? Oh, how about this? You get an email. You save as. It'll come up. Eventually.
eventually. Okay, see, came up, clerk demand the file, yeah, and you make up your own folder and save. And now it's yours. You can edit it, you can edit it and do whatever you want to it. Okay, it's that simple. Okay. Be on I already have it. I cancel. All right. So this case law here, Howlett versus Rose. Right? Now, for all of you people out there, when now we got this. Now we have a, a weapon when you take the paperwork to the clerk's office. Right? I put it a number one, all right, and federal rules, uh, uh, federal, uh, federal rule 5D2 is the, uh, the federal rule that says the clerk must accept the pleadings, and it doesn't say anything where the, the, the see, the clerk is a, is a they, they perform ministerial duties, meaning that uh, whatever whatever their duties are defined as, they must uh, um, perform that duty. They can they don't have the discretion to perform outside the definition of their duties. Now, when they do that, what can we do? Writ of mandamus. So writ of mandamus is filed when a court is acting outside its jurisdiction. Uh, an administration, a mini, administrative body is acting outside, uh, is acting in excess of jurisdiction, acting in, in ex excess of its ministerial duty, and a person as well, um, your employer, is seizing your money unlawfully and without, uh, without a warrant, okay? And you could take them to court, all right, under the writ of mandamus. And then... A writ of prohibition is issued with it, prohibiting your job from issuing, uh, from sending your money. All right. Usually, the writ usually uh, they're in a tandem. Writ of certiorari is a judicial review. Writ of mandamus is, is to compel them. Writ of prohibition is finally when it's all done prohibiting them because of the judicial review of the facts. After we compel them to do it, then we, we, we're we issuing them, uh, you know, an order to prohibit them from, you know, any more collection activities, uh, your employer from sending the money anymore, uh, you know, onward and so on. Okay, whatever you're looking for the court to do, whatever they're doing to hurt you, you're prohibiting them from doing that, a writ of prohibition. Okay. All right, so look, you know what else is good about this case law, right? Now, look what this case law is doing, right? Federal law. All right. Federal law is enforceable in state courts. All right, we went through all that already. But here's another thing. Look, the supremacy clause. Look, they're citing the supremacy clause. Some supremacy clause is Article 6, Okay makes those laws the supreme law of the land. That is the law of the land. That's why I keep telling you guys, uh, you're entitled to a trial by jury. Why? Because the Constitution says so. It's that simple. Okay? It's really that simple. All right, let me, uh, let me show you. Okay? all these things <laughs> here we go article supreme law article 6 united states constitution all judges are bound by this all courts are bound by this they don't like to but guess what we're using the full faith and credit they have to comply all right so see this is the um website heritage.org okay that assumption Supremacy clause. See what happens when you when you wave over it. It tells you what it is. Okay, the Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof, all treaties made blah, 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 the, under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be bound by it. You got that? So if there's a law out there that comes into conflict with this document here that comes into contact, uh, conflict with the 
uh, supreme law of the land, guess what? That law is void, and you got to tell that judge that that law cannot hurt you. We're doing that in my paperwork. I cover that in my paperwork a lot. Okay? So, all right? So these are the things that, you know, that we're learning. All right? And that's, I added this to the paperwork. Now this paperwork is stronger. Thanks to Irvin sending me the nice case law. See? Howlett versus Rose. It's always been out there. All right? But because we're, you know, I never really, we never ran into this trouble before. But now because we have the remedies now, um, you know, the, the remedies are there. Now we're trying to use them. We're running into the, the beast that's called the clerk's office, the, the clerk counter. Okay? Well, guess what? Now you have it. All right? Those of you watching my video, right, even if you don't have my paperwork, you're doing your own paperwork, right? Look up Howlett vs. Rose and print it out and bring it with you. Okay, bring it with you, and you show that clerk. Say, listen, federal law says you must uh, enforce. You must uh, federal law counts here, and look up uh, federal rules of procedure uh, five sub D two. That's the that's the clerk duty. That's the clerks must accept not the clerk the pleadings. It's uh, it's on the pleadings, and they must accept the pleadings. All right, and I was saying earlier. The clerk does not have the authority to read your paperwork. All right? When they pull that nonsense with walking away with your paperwork for 15 minutes. All right? Say, so listen, I don't, you know, I'm, you got to try and get along with these people. All right? I don't, you know, I don't want you arguing with these people right away. But if they come back trying to pull their, their nonsense, you're going to have to stand up there and fight and, and stick up for yourself. And you're going to say, listen, it's my understanding that you're supposed to just accept the paperwork and file it. My signature's there. It's it's legible. All right. It's not up to you. It's to you know try to understand what I'm saying. It's up to the judicial officer of the, the court, which is a judge. Okay. So and a lot of times, as we're finding out, they don't want it to go to us. To the gatekeeper, which is the clerks, they're there to to try and not you know trying to to obstruct you from getting through. But if you know the laws and you know what to say, they're going to have to accept your paperwork. Okay? You know, those of you that have my paperwork, you know, here here is the uh, clerk demand to file that I made up for you guys. Okay? Uh, so if anybody out there, if you're interested in my paperwork, uh, it's, it's a reasonable donation. Um, some of you out there, I've helped a lot of you out there, and never gave me a, you know, but some of you, <laughs> you know, listen, it's, it, it won't hurt you, but it, maybe to send me a little something, all right, some of you are just takers, you know, because I, you know, I'm nice to you, you know, I had some guys sending me, like, you know, a bunch of, you know, a bunch of emails, and, uh, you know, I'm like, did this guy ever send me a, do uh, um, a donation, and then I check my records, <laughs> and, you know, I never got a penny. Like, come on, do the right thing. You know, I'm not asking for a lot. Just make a gesture. Anything. I have some of you out there that send me donations all the time. I mean, because you guys know, uh, you know, it's trust me, it's appreciated. But it's, you know, it's don't don't think that I don't notice out there. Uh, those of you that are taking from me and you know haven't made any donation. I mean, do the right thing, will you? I mean, some of you. I had one guy, I was, I was doing everything for this guy, he never even offered me a penny. I, mean, I was writing up his paperwork and everything, and finally I'm like, dude, you're on your own. Never even made a pay never even made a payment to me, nothing. Not even an offer. Now, I know some of you are going through financial problems, but listen, $25 is going to kill you? It's just a gesture. All right, yesterday I made a mention of, you know, some people, uh, Never paid me. A couple of you guys reached out to me. You know what I said? Thanks. Keep it. Sometimes it's just the, uh, you know, your intentions, okay? It, it, it's all I need to hear sometimes. But also, you know, if you keep taking from me, you never offer me a penny. I mean, that goes noticed as well, you know? All right, so listen, I'm done crying about that. Sorry. It's just, it, it, it's a man thing, all right? I'm a man, you know, you want to be appreciated, but... 
it's also you don't like being taken advantage of either. You know what I mean? I was always taught that if somebody does something nice for you, you know, do the right thing. It's called doing the right thing. All right, so this video is over. All right, we covered uh, two things. We talked about a warrant, what a real warrant is, and what a fake warrant looks like, how the child support agencies use fake warrants to try and trick you to send in their money. And then we found uh, we have the case law that says the state courts must uh, they're, they're ab they have, must abide by the federal law. And we're using that for the, the gatekeeper, the clerk's counter, the clerk's office to accept our paperwork. All right, so listen, that's going to be the end of today's video, and I'll talk to you guys later.